Welcome to the Fox One Corp series of training videos. I'm Dave Springford. Please visit me online at www.foxonecorp.com for all your glider supplies. In this video, we want to take a look at the PowerFlarm Fusion and the Flarm Hub application that we can use to do all of our configuration wirelessly. We no longer need to use the USB stick to upload flarmconfig.txt files. That method is still available if you prefer. You can still create your file, put it on your USB stick, and insert the USB stick, power on the Fusion, and it will read the Flarm config file. But an easier way to do it, I think, is with this new wireless connection via Wi-Fi to your Fusion. So the first thing is your Fusion has to be powered on and within radio range of your device. So I'm using my laptop, but you could just as easily connect with a mobile phone, Apple or uh, Android, as well as any tablet. So what you want to do is you want to go to your network connections where you're going to see all your Wi-Fi networks on your device. And then you're going to look through the list. What we're going to see here is that I have this Wi-Fi network called FLA FUS 10W000532. That is the actual serial number. So the network name or the SSID for the network is the serial number for the Flarm. You can change this in Flarm Hub if you wish, but by default, it comes up with your Flarm serial number. With your Flarm, there was a sticker. So on the Flarm, there is a sticker. In the bubble wrap envelope that comes with it, there's a sticker on the outside of it, and there's one more sticker inside that's loose. The suggestion is you take that loose sticker, put it in your, your aircraft logbook, with your maintenance records so that you always have access to it. On this sticker, what we can see is, is we can see the serial number for the device, and that's the name of the network that's going to appear when you search for networks on your computer. Then the default Wi-Fi password is listed here as well. Again, you can change either the SSID or the Wi-Fi password if that's what you want to do. So what we'll go do is we'll go back to our list of networks here, we have our Flarm network. I'm just going to type in the password. And we can see that we're now connecting to our Fusion. We're connected. So now what I want to do is using any browser, we're just going to come up to our address bar. And we're going to type in 10.10.10.10. And you can see I've been there once before, so it's in my history. And now we are connected directly to the Fusion device. And everything we see on this screen is live to the device as it sits right now. And so you can see these are the same as the four status LEDs we have on the side of the box. And they are flashing live just as they would on the box. So this GPS green dot is flashing just as it is on the Fusion. This first page just gives us the, uh, the system overview. We can see the status. We can see that basically it's on the ground right now. The flight recorder's off. It's not reporting any errors. We can see the firmware version. This is a really nice feature. Now we can see exactly what the version is, when it's going to expire. Flarm Hub is this screen that we're on now. It's the application within the Fusion that sends all this information. We can see that we have version 1.00. I think when I looked yesterday, version 1.20 was available, so that could be updated. We'll do that in another video. Again, we can see our Flarm device ID, our serial number 532. We can see the radio ID, and we, have, we can see the aircraft type that's been set, our IGC serial number, and all of the licenses that come with the device. So we have audio output, engine noise level, IGC approval, and RFB. So both the Flarm A and the Flarm B antennas work. We can see down here our time and location and whether we have obstacle databases present. The QR code that's on the sticker that we saw, so that's another way you can connect. Instead of typing in your uh, or finding your SSID and typing in your password, you can scan the QR code to get a more direct connection. So all of that appears as well within Flarm Hub. So you can see your QR connect code there, SSID, the password's hidden, and the IP address. So 
connection is quite straightforward. So over on the left side is the menu, and we can click on within configuration, flarm. And this is where we would do our flarmconfig.txt file. So right now, this is going to go into a glider. It has no transponder. And the radio address, we can select flarm, so it'll put out that DF12 radio ID that we saw. You can select ICAO, or you can select random. We'll leave that at flarm. Within data port, this is going to set up what is exported on either the RJ45 or the D sub 9, the DB9 port. So right now, the RJ45 is going to send GPS data navigation and all FLARM data. In the hint right here for version, it says select the highest version that the display supports to have access to all functions. Uh, my experience, and I need to confirm this, is that version 6 works well with any of the LX Nav equipment. So I'm going to set that to version 6 because this Fusion is going to be connected to an S80. Leave the baud rate at 19,200. The D sub 9 port, again, we can select what's going to be exported from there. In this glider, there's only going to be one connection via the uh, RJ45, so I don't need anything coming out the D sub port, so I'm going to set that to none. You might notice when I change any item here, select this to navigation and flyer, and right here a green check mark appears, and then it disappears. That means it's actually writing that command into the fusion immediately. So as we make any changes here, it's updated automatically directly into the fusion. Transponder and ADSB receiver. Do we want to receive ADSB, ADSB collision warnings? Yes, turn that on. Do we want mode S warnings? Yep, we'll turn that on. Audio output, depending what you want. If you're in a tow plane, you want this on, for example, or a powered aircraft. For now, I'm going to leave this uh, off so we get no audio output. And we could also upload just a general configuration file here. You could do the same as before. Instead of putting it on the USB, create your own flarmconfig.txt, drag and drop it into this box right here, and then hit the upload button, and that will write that configuration file. Under Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, what we have is we have the ability to change the SSID or the network name. Instead of being the serial number, you could set this to Dave's Glider if you wanted. You can change the password. You can set it so there's no password if you want, so it's completely open, uh, or you can put whatever password you want. Once those are done, you'll have to hit restart to send that information to the Fusion. Bluetooth, same thing. You can change the name. It shows up with just the serial number. You can pair with any other device. You can delete previous pairings. Over here, Flarm Hub, we can lock the device with a password. So in club gliders, for example, if you have one person managing the club fleet, you could lock all of these so nobody can change the configuration file. Probably very handy uh, in a club environment. And you can select the language for this, uh, this form. Under maintenance, we have firmware update. So right now we have version 7.03. 7.04 is the most recent. If I had previously downloaded that, I could then use my Windows Explorer and drag and drop into this box the new firmware file and then click Upload. One thing that you have to remember is that when you have your Wi-Fi on your laptop connected to the Fusion, you have no internet access. So you can't say, oh, I want to update this now and then try and go to the website to download the file. You have to have downloaded it before, so you have it saved on your laptop, and then you can drag and drop it in here to update it. There are two firmwares. So there's the PowerFlarm firmware. That's the one that most of us are familiar with from working with our cores and portables so far. But there's also the Flarm Hub firmware. 
as I said, this application that we're working with right now, that's the Flarm Hub. And current version is 1.00 and 1.20 is available, so I could download that and update that Flarm Hub firmware on the system. Obstacle database, not much in the way of obstacle databases in North America, but if you had one, again, once you'd already downloaded it and saved it to your computer, drag and drop it here, upload it directly to the device. Downloading IGC files. This is where you can get all of your files for download. Click on load list of files. See, it says it's busy up here. This unit is brand new. It's never, uh, never been in the air, so there are no IGC files for us to download. If there were, we'd see a list of them here and we could select what we wanted to download. Then we have some tools. Traffic monitor, for example. So just sitting on the ground connected to a device, we could open this traffic monitor and we could see any traffic that was in the area. As we can see, there's somebody right there that just popped up 1900 feet above me and that downwards arrow says they were descending. Um, so I'm just sitting at home right now and we're about, uh, now they're 2000 feet above and climbing. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm sitting at home right now, about uh, six miles from the uh, Waterloo Region Airport, and this will be probably a Cessna coming back in from the training area. So we can see all traffic just sitting on the ground here with this traffic monitor. If we look at data port, we can see what data is being sent over the data port. So we can see the raw data that's coming out. Uh, these GP, RMC, GGA, those are your GPS information. So this 4330 north and 803106 west, that's the uh, latitude and longitude. Range analyzer. Again, this unit hasn't flown, so there's not enough information for it to calculate a range. But after you have several IGC files, you can see your range analysis. And this is new. It uses multiple files from your device to come up with kind of an average range through all those files. Finally, under support, if you're having issues with the Fusion, you can go here to the support package and you can create a support package. This will create, uh, as it says up here, a zip file containing all sorts of information that you could then email to uh, the help desk at Flarm and they'll be able to help you uh, solve your problem. We can restart the Flarm hub if we start having problems with connections and we also have a factory default reset for the device. So hopefully you've learned something new about your uh, Flarm Fusion and the Flarm Hub application today. If you have any questions, drop them into the comments below or send me an email. Please visit me online at www.fox1corp.com.